Hello. This video will be on what is called Gaussian integers. These are um, complex numbers of special shape. Um, the collection of them is denoted this way and by definition they consist of complex numbers with um, integer real and imaginary part. From the definition of operations on complex numbers we could see that this is closed under addition. And that is very straightforward. Adding two complex numbers, what we are supposed to do is to add the real parts and to add the imaginary parts. And of course, if A, B, and C, and D are all integers, the results will be integers. And also, it is closed under multiplication. If we remember how to multiply two complex numbers using the algebraic expressions, um, we just need to follow the um, standard rules of distributivity and associativity and commutativity, and the result will be AC minus BD plus IAD plus BC. And the point is that if ABCD again are integers, so if we take two Gaussian integers and multiply them, the result will be Gaussian integer, these expressions will be still integers. So let's look at, um, yeah, the, just um, putting it all together, this is a set where we have arithmetic operations of addition, of course subtraction works the same way, and multiplication. So what about division? Well, if we just look at integers inside them, so they will be extending the set of integers where we also have these arithmetic operations. And obviously division is not always possible in integers, so some integers cannot be divided by most of them. The only integers we can divide by and still have an integer answer is, uh, or rather, r plus or minus 1. So these are called uh, invertible elements. So let's look which, in, uh, which Gaussian integers are invertible, which we can divide by. And the story is very similar, but a bit more interesting than for integers. So let's um, imagine one such, and then we should have uh, its inverse. That's what division by it will be, multiplying by its inverse, which will have to be, again, a Gaussian integer. And uh, the condition for the other number to be the inverse of u is that the product is equal to 1. So let's look at the consequences of this condition. Um, let's apply squared absolute value squared um, um, modulus to the um, to the sides of this equation. So on one side we will have the modulus. Well, let's just start with the modulus first, and we can rewrite it quickly as a product because uh, the absolute value is multiplicative. And then on the other side we have the modulus of one, which is just one. So we uh, can see that um, the modulus um, of u, the moduli of u and u inverse, will have to multiply to 1. Well, um, modulus by definition is the um, square root of the sum of squares, so it's more interesting, it's more convenient to work with uh, if a is this Gaussian integer, it's more convenient to work with the squared modulus, which is a squared plus b squared, which will be an integer. So let's take this equation and take the um, square of all of its sides. So we'll have this equation, which will still be 1. Uh, nothing changes. Um, the squared modulus, the squared absolute value of u, will still have to be um, um, multiplicable to 1. So it will have to be an invertible thing. But what is it? Is, um, um, it, uh, it has to be an integer, because a and b are integers, so that is always an integer. And uh, moreover, it is a non-negative integer, so we are looking at a solution of this equation, something multiplied by something else, giving us 1 in, among integers, and moreover, 
um, this first something is a non-negative one. Well, there is only one such solution, so this has to be one. And uh, so has to be the absolute value itself. It has to be one because um, the square root of positive square root of one is one. So let's look at the geometry of uh, what we concluded. So we know that uh, u has to be a Gaussian integer, and Gaussian integers sit on integer points of the argon plane. And at the same time it should be in the distance one from the origin, but um, those points are on the unit circle, so I'll try to make it a circle as much as I can. And um, together with the condition that they have to have integer coordinates, we have only four solutions. So we have one, we have um, i, we have negative one, and we have negative i. So this is our conclusion that invertible Gaussian integers are these numbers, plus minus one, plus minus i. So I can uh, complete it all by really uh, listing how they invert. So if um, here we have u, one, negative one, i, and negative i, we can list um, the inverse to that u, and for one and for negative one, the inverses are themselves, and for i, um, that is a little exercise to see that the inverse is negative i and vice versa. The inverse for negative i is i. So that is it about basic arithmetic of Gaussian images.